All right, it is time for another quick review, and everyone should know what this is. This is Batman Arkham City. This was the follow-up to Arkham Asylum, which released two years before this. Arkham Asylum was just a humongous hit, and it sold so well that Rocksteady was really quick on coming up with a sequel. And they wanted this to be bigger and better than Arkham Asylum, and I really think they succeeded. And really, enough talking about it, let's get started. Now, I've already played through the storyline 100, well, not really 100% through. I played through the main storyline 100% through. And it's surprisingly, throughout the entire game, it only takes up 30%, which you can tell by this. Um, which is really weird. I don't think I've ever seen a game where the main storyline takes up so little of the game. You know, the fact that I still have 70% left to find and complete in this game is really amazing. But let's get started. Let's start with a new game. And you do have the option to get the Catwoman story moves and weapons. I haven't gotten it yet. I really have to consider that. I haven't played it through. I've heard it's really good. And do new game. Normal, subtitles, hints, yes. And I think everything's in order. Now, what Rocksteady's main motivation, uh, as far as story goes, was to make the story better, more detailed, incorporate more villains from uh, Batman's history, and it really succeeded. If I had to say anything that's really different about this story from Arkham Asylum, Arkham Asylum felt more like a comic book storyline, you know, with the Joker, you know, growing so big after... In, at the end of the story and all that. This feels more like a movie storyline. Um, the way it's told. The way it starts can be a little bit disorienting. Uh, it starts off really weird. Instead of starting like subtly like the uh, first game did with Batman just taking the Joker to Arkham Asylum. This starts off, you know, Bruce Wayne being tortured. Then we go to a cutscene of him talking about shutting down Arkham City. And... It's, it's just a really, really cluttered beginning, but it really works. And if I had to say anything graphically so far, as you can probably tell by the cutscenes, this looks so much better than Arkham Asylum, which says a lot because Arkham Asylum looked really good too. Um, but with Arkham City, they really did a good job um, going past the flaws of the Unreal Engine. Uh, the Unreal Engine, as I stated in um, Batman Arkham Asylum, had flaws to it. Like the facial features are bad, the lip sync is really bad with the Unreal Engine. They were able to really work with that and really improve it. It's like the developers, you know, specifically improved all of these flaws with the engine just for this game. And where you can really tell the improvements is in this cutscene right here with Hugo Strange. That is the best looking you know, face as far as detailed, you know, details and the way it looks, the way the lip sync goes, that's the best work I've seen from the Unreal Engine thus far. You know, the lip sync is perfect, the face has no real noticeable flaws about it, I like the reflection of Bruce Wayne and the glasses, you know, it's, it's the best work I've seen from the Unreal Engine. And we're going to start with our first little mission here we have to escape out of this chair we'll look around a bit detail of the environments are amazing and i still love this really cool feature they have in the game here where you can see the characters on television screens and let's get out of here should only take a little bit there we go now we're supposed to counter this guy coming in i always counter him i've always wondered whether you really have to counter him because um whether it just goes to the next scene anyways. Looks like you're going to escape, looks like you're going to escape, and you don't. I really like this opening a lot more than Arkham Asylum's opening. Um, and I like Arkham Asylum's opening. I like the fact that, you know, you're walking around Arkham Asylum leading the Joker to uh, his cell, pretty much, in Arkham Asylum. 
And really, the reason why this is so different is because the developers are really banking on the fact that you had played Arkham Asylum. Um, with Arkham Asylum, the reason why the opening was so slow and so subtle was because it really wanted you to get used to the environment. It wanted you to get used to you know, where you were going to be playing in for the next eight hours, what the game looked like, um, since it was a very new experience for a Batman game. Um, with this game, they're really banking on the fact that you already played Arkham Asylum, so it just goes right into the action right away, without really any time to really look around, you know, get used to where you're at. Um, and I think that works a lot better than Arkham Asylum's opening did. Now we're about to enter into a fight scene uh, right now. Uh, this is a very, really unique fight scene for this particular game, especially when comparing it to Arkham Asylum, because you're fighting in handcuffs. Okay, we're about to head here. The farther we walk up, they start to enter out. Let's K, okay, let's go. There we go. Now you're supposed to counter to kind of eliminate them faster. There we go. And I'm supposed to save Ryder. There we go. Now you're supposed to believe that you're able to walk up further, which you're actually not supposed to. You're supposed to get hit. And this will lead into our introduction with the Penguin. Now I honestly prefer the look of Penguin from Batman Returns. But as far as loyalty to like the comic and all this stuff, Penguin looks really good in this game. And I like the voice. I thought the voice work for the Penguin was awesome. Waking, waking, Wayne. Oh, what's up? I think what's really unique about this game is how movie-like the camera angles are. You know, it's not your typical looking game. You know, they they go for more, you know, angled camera camera shots, more shaky camera. And I'm supposed to counter that. I totally forgot. There we go. I think you could actually hit the penguin, too, right here. Yep. I'm supposed to counter at some point, because I know eventually... Uh, he breaks out of the handcuffs right there, and this will lead into what the main combat looks like in the game, which has not been altered that much from Arkham Asylum. If I had to say anything differently about the combat, is that it's moving just a little bit faster than it did in Arkham Asylum, but not by much. It's not like one of those things that you can tell right away. Oh, God. There we go. Now, I knocked out the penguin. Now, if you don't knock out the penguin, um, he uh, says dialogue while you're escaping. And I'm trying to run and climb. Hold. Come on. There we go. You do have to kind of be dead on on where you're standing to, to get to where you want to go in some places. So that can be a little tedious. Okay. Now we're going to get in touch with Alfred. I think one thing about a lot of these newer games, when comparing them to older games, like let's throw a game out there, let's say Max Payne 2, is that, you know, years back, and I say years back, it was only like 2003, I think, when Max Payne 2 came out. It feels like longer, um, but um, but years back there was a, a huge difference between um, in-game cutscenes and uh, and regular cutscenes that were designed specifically, you know, just for show and not for gameplay. Um, you know, as time has gone on, especially with games like this, the cutscenes, you know, it's become harder to tell you know, 
the graphics between like the cutscenes and the in-game graphics. That's how good you know video games have gotten. Now we're about to switch into the bat suit, and we'll get into the uh, gameplay in the city after I think we get into a meeting with uh, or a scene with Two Face after this, and then I'll show you guys the open world city, and then we'll end it there. I'm only going to do the first 30 minutes of the game, much like I did uh, Arkham Asylum. Now the bat suit does look better in this game than it looked in Ar than it did in Arkham Asylum. Uh, one of the flaws, if I had to say anything about the character model flaws with the game, uh, as far as Arkham Asylum is concerned, they had kind of this shiny look to them. It was weird, you know. It it just didn't mesh well with the environments, and you know they smoothed everything out. This looks a little bit more realistic. Now the encryptor. That's uh, this is an interesting tool. And it's a really cool tool. You, know, you use it throughout the game to unlock doors and uh, other uh, various things that are locked throughout the game. It's a really cool device to use. Now this scene introduces Two-Face and Catwoman. I do have one problem with Two-Face in this game, and I'll get to that when we finally see him. Okay, now let's get started here. Let's uh, get through this cutscene and we'll get into our first fight in the bat suit. I need to find Catwoman now. I like the details in this game as far as graphically. Like, you can actually see the snowflakes falling on Batman's cape. That's actually really cool. And another thing to really focus on with the gameplay is this uh, sort of compass that's on top of the screen. When you see like the green quotation mark, which kind of looks like something from the Riddler, um, on top, it points you in a direction that you need to go uh, to your next destination. And since this is an open world game, you can kind of fool around a bit, but I'll get to that more when we get into the open world uh, setting when we're able to get a better view of the city. But you have that to tell you where you're going, and then you have this really, really obvious arrow with the bat signal um, above it that points you in, in the direction as well. All right, here we go. Now, as you probably tell, can tell from the beginning, I did... Um, play my first go around in the game on easy. I, I tend to do that when I have no clue what to really expect with the game. Um, this is on normal, and if I had to say anything that's really different about the normal um, setting and the easy setting, you know, the fight scenes, defeating an enemy is still about the same, you know. You know, they're still very easy to get through, but the numbers of enemies seems to be a little different. Like, I believe in the easy mode, there's only four enemies. There seems to be, like, like seven or eight in this fight. Okay, I think we got two left. Come on. There you go. The enemies are really kind of bizarre in this game, like you have the regular um, kind of prisoners that are in the yellow, uh, in the, uh, I say yellow, sorry, orange, I'm not colorblind, I swear, um, in the orange prison suits, and then there's some that are not in prison suits. Um, none really seem to be different in difficulty um, when they don't have weapons. And I'm not sure whether I went the right way or not. Nah, I didn't. Um, but that's another thing about this game. Um, as far as uh, differences with enemies. And here we go. Uh, some have weapons. The weapons... Um, 
are a little different in this game than they were in Arkham Asylum. And this is two Two Face. If one of the flaws that I have with Two Two Face is not necessarily the way the character is portrayed, but how short his role is in this game. He's a major villain in the comics, and yet he only has like a five-minute cameo in this game. It really pissed me off. But um, with enemies, enemies have weapons in this game, uh, like they did in Arkham Asylum. Um, but they're a lot easier to get through in this game than they were in Arkham Asylum because there are various uh, perks that you, can, that you can add to the bat suit uh, that helps you become a little more impervious to the weapons. You know, that still kills you eventually, but it takes longer um, with the add-ons to the suit. Which, you know, I forgot. I haven't showed you guys yet, so I might as well show you guys that after our little brief cutscene, if it allows me to show it. Sorry, I was like moving around. I don't know whether you heard that on my mic or not. Okay. Now we go up, go up the ladder. Taking out the thug with the gun is the key. Without him, the rest of the room won't be a problem. There we go. Take him out. Fresh faces for the gang. Today we present each of you with an exciting new opportunity. Two opportunities. <laughs> to join the Now some guards do run away, so it's made a little bit easier that way. Okay, let's get through this fight scene. Alright. Again, none of these fight scenes are really that hard. Uh, the regular, like, prisoners and the orange suits and the gray suits are really easy to get through. Even the ones with the weapons are particularly easy. At first, you know, I thought I did that wrong. I was really surprised I went to the next cutscene, you know, when Two-Face shot me. It's like, did I fail at something at the first time I play when I first played this game? But surprisingly... You know, surprise that actually happens. And it's actually a way to show, th throughout the game, B Batman's uh, suit does become more damaged. And that's actually really cool. No gun, huh? Shame. This is now this is really funny. A lot of uh, people brought this up. Uh, the jo the common joke about this game is that all guys must have worked on this game. Because they went into such detail with the females like Catwoman and Talia uh, Al Ghul. Um, the way they walk, the way their butts move and all that stuff. It, it's it, it, There's so much detail behind it. And it, it, it's become, you know, a, a common joke about these games. Now we're about to be we're about to be able to use a little bit of the detective features in the game in a bit here and uh, show you guys that briefly. What do you know, Selena? Never heard of it. That's not what I wanted to hear. What about Strange? I don't trust him. And you'll notice it when you look at Batman's suit really up close. You can actually see the bullet hole in it. If he turns around, might be able to see it. Maybe that's kind of. You can kind of see it in that angle. Now we have a brief introduction to the Joker here. So glad they were able to get Mark Hamill back to play the Joker. He initially did not want to do it because he thought, you know, he ended Joker on a high note with Arkham Asylum and he didn't want to come back. Um, they thank they thankfully got him back in this, and he does a really great job. I like it. You expecting a kiss? It was Joker. You can tell right there, bullet hole right in the suit. No one is. Nine lives, remember? Okay, now we use a bit of the detective features. Our next mission to interrogate Joker to uncover Protocol Ten, uh, but we get to scan the crime scene. OK, 
Okay, there's bullet hole one. Press A to scan evidence. This is a really cool feature. And with um, and it shows you exactly where to go next. All right. Okay, now I know there's a specific door that we have to exit here. I believe it's this one. All right, now th this will give you a sense when we finally uh, walk out of this place of what the city is like. We'll finally get a good look at it. Now, one of the differences between this uh, setting in Arkham Asylum is that, you know, there's a lot more places that you can rappel onto, uh, that you can jump onto, and it's a really cool city. Okay. Now, if I had to say anything about this... Um, open world city is that it's not as um it doesn't give me that same creepy vibe that um Arkham Asylum did. Arkham Asylum had such a cool look to it and I was actually I actually felt like the look got a bit tainted with um that creepy feeling got a bit tainted with the open world setting. It's not as creepy since it's a bigger environment, it's not as enclosed as Arkham City, and I actually prefer the creepy feel to uh, Arkham Asylum rather than I do uh, Arkham City. That's not to really talk down about um, about Arkham City at all. It's still a cool setting. Now we're supposed to meet a character here. You can see him standing right there, which I think, yep, if you go in detective mode, you can see his blue outline. We'll glide onto this rooftop. Gliding is so cool in this city because you can glide from such high environments and catch everyone off guard. I have been watching you, Batman. Mysterious Watcher. S scan the symbol. Trying to scan this thing, will it do it? There we go. Now with this, you know, you unlock various um, things throughout the game, like characters' biographies, which is the same thing that you can do in Arkham Asylum. Except this goes in a little bit more detail, like Watcher in the Wings, you know, gives you kind of a brief uh, view of him and side mission that you would, uh, that I still have yet to do with him. Um... So it's actually really cool. And I meant to show you guys the upgrades to the suit, which I think it will let me show you guys. There we go. Now these are the upgrades that you can make to the uh, bat suit. You can upgrade weapons. Um, I really recommend upgrading the bat suit first because as you progress throughout the game, you start facing more enemies with weapons, guns, and all that stuff. So really upgrading the bat suit is really uh, first priority with this game. And from there, you can upgrade the weapons and the gadgets and all that. Your combat uh, fighting style, you can upgrade too. But really, with the combat fighting style, it really doesn't need to be upgraded in this game because the combat alone as it comes in the game in the beginning is actually good enough to go through the entire game so really upgrading the combat should be like last priority okay now let's see if we can work our way a little farther in this game i think that's the building where joker shot from i think
I think. Let's see. I'm trying to figure out where to go. Trying to figure out where to go here. Oh, I didn't take my own advice. I keep forgetting I can look at the top of the screen and to tell where to go. I have a nasty nasty habit on doing that. Okay, let's get this over with, this fight scene over with. Come on. Like I said, the combat doesn't really need to be upgraded. It's it's pretty good on its own for, from start to finish. So there's really no upgrade that's really required of you as far as combat's concerned. Like like this, look at this. I'm going through like seven or eight guys so easily, and I'm occasionally getting hit. But Batman's health meter is is much more generous in this game than it was in Arkham Asylum, so getting slight hits doesn't really matter. There we go. And I'm just kind of walking around the city, you know, different parts of the city, it does, um, various parts of the city do differ in look and design. Like, I believe there's actually a part of the city where you can actually see, um, Batman's, uh, Bruce Wayne's parents, um, uh, the area where they were killed. That's somewhere in the game. I've yet to be able to find it. And we have the arrow pointing down. Let's glide. Bam. All right. And one left. Man, that was really easy. <laughs> I love Alfred in this game. You know, he has actually a few a few really funny lines in this. Okay, we're about twenty seven minutes into this. We'll go for a few minutes longer. Open door, and we get to meet Harley Quinn, who looks. Um, I don't know. I, I just love that scene where Harley Quinn tries to attack you. Just knock her right down. Um, Harley Quinn's look much better in this game than it was in Arkham Asylum. They, they toned down a look a bit, a little bit closer to what she looked like in the comic. Um, but, you know, but keeping her to the dark and gritty style of the rest of the game. So that really worked out for the better. Now this is your first uh, occasion in the game where you deal with um, guards with guns. We're not able to walk through that door yet. Head on is suicide. I need to disappear. Pick them off silently, one by one. Don't you move, Batman. There we go. They don't know where I am. Good. Let's keep it that way. Now this uh, shows a bit of the stealth in the game, which is pretty much the same as it was um, in Arkham Asylum. You know, with coming up from behind guys with guns and then taking them out that way. Um, but we'll go. We'll do this mission and then we'll call it quits from there. Go drop. Down. Double take down. Get back up. You'll be okay. Wait here. That idiot thinks he's safe in the confessional. He's just made it easier for me to get in behind him. All right. I believe we go over here. Try 
trying to remember how to get into So there, let's get out of detective mode for a bit. There we go. There we go. Pretty easy stuff. And I believe how many do we have left? Let's get back into detective mode. I can glide to the scaffolding above him without being seen and take him down from there. Okay. Now let's glide. Bam. And I think that's the last guy. I think. Yep, that was the last guy. But that's pretty much, you know, the stealth missions within the game. Um... You know, not much has changed as far as that's concerned. Um, but that's pretty much Arkham City. And really, it's just as good, if not better, than Arkham Asylum. Yes, I do find the city to be less dark and gritty than that of Arkham Asylum. But, you know, that doesn't really matter because the gameplay is good. The story is, I think, better than Arkham Asylum. Um, the writing is good. The acting, the voice acting is great. The gameplay is just as addicting as it was before. It's just a good all-around game. And let's show you guys this really quick, the level up feature. Um, bat suit. Um, let's upgrade something. Let's upgrade the slide just for the hell of it. Oh, wait, no, sorry. we got to go down here to upgrade. This is the new stuff, like... Um, ballistic armor, combat armor, shockwave attack, um, stu ballistic armor, and it shows you what you bought. It provides a 25% increase in the level of protection against firearm damage, that stuff, so we'll upgrade from there. Um, this stuff you can all unlock throughout the game, no different than any other game that, that anyone's really ever played for these systems. Um, but yeah, that's Batman Arkham Asylum, like I said, just as good, if not better, than Arkham or sorry, that's Arkham City. Just as good, if not better, than Arkham Asylum. Um, thank you guys so much for listening, and I will see you next time.